I've been watching the show maybe three or four times already. And um, I've got a kind of a an issue like, like I, like I, I'm married and like I'm I'm watching pornography, and I I feel like because I I think it goes really well with this whole cuckolding um, fantasy thing is like I feel like when I'm watching pornography that when when I'm watching two people having sex you know and the girl I'm attracted to and another guy having sex with that girl is that I'm, I'm by like by nature of that, that whole uh, thing that I'm in the cuckolding position as, as watching the pornography itself. And so I think I'm, it's like, it's like rewiring my brain to where I'm thinking, you know, that again, I think it's, it's affecting me that way. And so I'm kind of, I, Sorry, I, I'm kind of nervous. <laughs> I guess, yeah, no, I, I hear that. I guess I just want to clarify, uh, I'm yet to hear a problem so far. Is there, <laughs> so, I mean, I'm, I'm not saying, if this is causing you distress, then we'll talk about it, but uh, what is, what yeah, is like, this I, causing I an issue? I need some help, like, like how, can I, how can I stop? Because it's kind of like, like I, 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 I kind of want to stop, like, viewing the pornography because mm -hmm. the way it's affecting me and, you know, because I, I think I'm going to be a better husband, you know, without that kind of thing around. And so I was like, I was wanting to know if Dr. Lay had any advice on how to quit pornography. I think you asked the very best person that question. Uh, Dr. Lay, let me give it to you. <laughs> um, so can you guys hear me? Because I know the phone system's a little Yeah, late. I think we've got yeah, that figured good. out. Yeah, you're good. So... Um, I really support men who want to be mindful about their sexuality, who really want to look at how to be conscious about how to integrate their sexuality into their lives and be responsible and ethical in that way. Um, my, I actually have a book that your viewer might, might, might really enjoy. It's called Ethical Porn for Dicks, A Man's Guide to Responsible Viewing Pleasure. And in it, you know, I talk about these kinds of issues, about the guys that feel like they're watching too much pornography, about the guys that, you know, feel like um, they want their wife to act like the porn stars, um, or even um, they're struggling because they feel like they get turned on more watching pornography than with their wife. What I recommend instead of trying to stop the pornography, um, because we as human beings are actually not really very good at trying to stop doing something, but we are pretty good uh, at trying to change our behavior or at trying to increase other behaviors. So what I ask guys to do is instead of trying to stop pornography, tell me what you what kinds of things you feel like you would be doing instead of watching pornography. Well, like, you know, I'd be going on walks with my wife. I'd be spending more romantic time time with my wife. I'd be, I'd be talking to my wife more. Um, and, and I asked the guys then, let's pay attention to that stuff. And we even can chart it out perhaps. Sometimes I have worked with guys and I've said, okay, look, what if you, you know, only watch pornography one time for every three times you have sex with your wife? Um, and so it's not that we are trying to completely stop or eradicate a certain behavior, but we're just trying to shift our attention and our energy towards the things we want more of. The other thing, though, that um, that is really common in couples is that, you know, there are men like your like your caller who feel like they they are watching more porn and they're having less sex with their wife. Causality is an interesting issue here because what the research shows is that typically what happens is that the couple stops having sex as frequently or that the couple's sexuality changes and then the husband goes to pornography, which is a vehicle for masturbation. We have to be very, very clear about that. Pornography is nothing more and nothing less than a tool to enhance masturbation in men. And so the man goes to, to pornography to, to masturbate more um, to compensate for changes in the sexuality with, with the partner. 
So I encourage, again, before we start demonizing and blaming pornography for these issues, let us look at the context within which, you know, this behavior is occurring because, you know, the system is really uh, a big factor here that we have to pay attention to. So we need to look at how your caller is having sex with his wife, how frequently that sex is happening, how satisfying that sex is happening. Sometimes we can explore that we would be afraid to explore or share with our partner um, because pornography doesn't judge us. Pornography is easy to turn on, you know, to, to get the Internet to have sex with you. All you need to do is push the button. It's a little more complicated when we're dealing with real people. Well, and I, I love the idea that you pointed out of uh, not trying to decrease the pornography, but putting a ratio to, you know, having intercourse or having a relationship with your wife, because I think oftentimes we won't actually see the porn go down, but we will see the interactions with the wife go up. So often we think of our sexuality as being limited. And yeah, there is the, the tyranny of hydraulics. There is a certain number of erections and orgasms that uh, most men are able to achieve. But I think most men would be pretty surprised at uh, what they'd be able to accomplish if they had that kind of ratio or had that kind of uh, incentive. Yeah, for sure. Do we want to get James back on the line to maybe see what he's thinking about this? Yeah, uh, James, we should be able to Hello? hear you. Oh, yes. Oh, good. Yep. You are on the line. Sorry, Perfect. I should be listening. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I kind of get from that as I, I kind of should, like, maybe if I have my wife, like, um, like have her permission to, you know, like not masturbate without her permission. Would that help? Like that way it's like she's in complete control and I wouldn't have that whole, I don't know. I'm just thinking out loud. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I hear that, and I'll, I'll certainly let y'all respond, but to me, that still feels tied to a sense of shame or a sense of uh, this idea of being maybe addicted to pornography or to masturbation, being unable I'm to stop to, yourself. I'm, I'm trying to eliminate the arousal from pornography so that my wife arouses me more. Like, because he, he, kind of, he kind of said, uh, you know, like, try to um, use it as an arousal tool. But I'm trying to think if... If I if I don't get aroused by a you know like sixteen tens on all my favorite videos, you know my wife my wife might like if they're always arousing me, then my wife who you know she's very beautiful but you know not sixteen tens like I'm the like I'm a sultan you know like the so maybe like that's why that's the whole reason why I try to want to cut out the pornography altogether is so that my wife arouses me more. And then I'm more satisfied that way. I yeah, feel so like... I, I don't know. It's just... I, you know, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that... I feel like that might run the risk of that... It might work for a while, but I feel like that would quickly turn into resentment. And why aren't you letting me? And I have to go to ask for permission now. And it it might it might oh, complicate no, was, things sorry, that more. Was an, that, was an exa that was an example of I go to permission, basically <laughs> saying like... I don't want to do that without somebody else except, you know, like, so if I'm in pornography, I'm in the basement, you know, just, you know, doing my thing and my wife's up, you know, in the bedroom reading a book and it's like, it just seems, it just seems like it, there's a better way, I think. I don't know. I, and I try to like go to therapists and they say the same thing. Like, there's nothing wrong. You like you, but, uh, but I feel like there is, I, I don't know. That's so why I'm trying to ask if you guys have any advice on on this whole kind of situation. Yeah, uh, Dr. Light, let me give you a chance to respond. Um, you know, so, so it's interesting how this kind of, you know, uh, connects to, to cuckolding in a way. Um, you know, there is a there is a practice called um, female led relationships where um, men give their wife um, or a female dominant complete control of the male sexuality and in some cases you know the man even puts on a, a cage you know a cock cage um, so that he literally can't masturbate without her permission one of the one of the wild things is that some of those devices 
are um, like Bluetooth and internet enabled so that um, your online dominant um, can unlock them remotely um, uh, or lock them <laughs> remotely. Um, it, 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 it's really kind of wild. I am not, however, suggesting that that is the answer here. Instead, you know, what I really think would be interesting um, is if you – sat down with your wife and asked her what she finds sexually interesting. Um, I got to say, it sounds like you are really, really focused on um, your sexual interest, your sexual arousal, your sexual experience. And I wonder um, what her interests are and how connected you are with that, because I bet that it would be a pretty arousing, erotic, and exciting experience for you and her if you asked her what her sexual fantasy is. Not a lot of women um, have the opportunity or permission to kind of express that um, or to share that. Men, because, you know, because of male kind of sexual privilege, um, we have a lot more permission to kind of identify what we're interested in. You know, 16 perfect tens, like you said. What is she interested in and what would it be like for you to sit down with her um, and explore her fantasy, or even, you know, what kind of pornography does she watch, or what kind of erotica does she read, and what would it be like to share that with her? Instead of trying to, again, you know, instead of trying to suppress or stop or turn off your interest in pornography, let's try and turn up the dial on your interest in your wife's sexuality. Let's incentivize and empower that. Mm. So I, I hope that gives you a, a place to start. You know, I, I would definitely sure. recommend, yeah. uh, you know, some of uh, Dr. Lay's books on these topics as you're kind of working through these things. And again, talking to a, uh, a sex therapist who is going to be understanding of these kinds of issues and give you a more complex answer than, well, porn is fine or porn is evil and, you know, brushing it off from there. Yeah, well, I mean, I try to go to religious therapists like because they're apparent, like they're really against pornography. So I thought maybe that would help and it didn't that help at all. So yeah, I, I can't say that I'm shocked, uh, but OK, you, you give what you ask for it sometimes. So. Well, then I go to a, sexual, or a secular um, therapist, and and they tell me the exact opposite. And so, I, like I, like my 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 urge to stop pornography is not coming from a religious, you know, point of view. It's coming from, I, you know, I think this would, I think it would, you know, make my wife happier and all that kind of stuff. So I guess I really need to, you know, think this through. Well, it very well may, uh, but just, I guess, to wrap it all up, I would suggest that the problem here isn't the pornography. The problem here is the connection with your wife, uh, whether that's her interest in sex, whether that's her level of arousal, or whether that's just your ability or interest or efforts in uh, eliciting that arousal and creating that connection and developing that relationship with her. So I would really encourage you to, to focus more on the sex with her rather than the not. You know, like Dave, uh, like Dr. Lay said, uh, staying away from trying to avoid things and instead running towards something. Yeah, I gotcha. But I, I Very certainly, good. yeah, I certainly hope that helps, and I really appreciate you giving us a call. Yeah, thanks a lot. Yeah. Thank Take care. You. You know, I, I'll just uh, I'll just kind of comment there that um, you know your caller is right that there is kind of a divide here between religious therapists and secular therapists um, around sexuality, and we have to acknowledge how morally complex sexuality is because most of our kind of sociosexual rules come from, uh, you know, a, a history of morals that, that emerged from religion. And one of the places that we are now trying to turn things um, is by moving from 
what we call an act-based model of sexual health to a values-based model of sexual health. And, you know, an act-based model of sexual health is really the religious kind of tradition that, you know, sex outside marriage is bad, sex inside marriage is good. You know, penis and vagina sex is good, penis anywhere else sex is bad. Um, that, you know, heterosex is good, homosex is bad. These are act-based models of sexual health where the goodness of sex is defined on what you do. Instead, now we are realizing with the diversity of sexual expression that is out there, we're now realizing that it's not so much what you do, but it's more how you do it. And so the, the therapists and the clinicians and the thinkers that I'm really interested in. And this even includes religious folks. There is a group called the Religious Institute, which is a, a consortium of pastors and ministers who recognize that religion has not done a good job with sexuality, and they are trying to do better. They actually come to some of my trainings, which I'm you know, really kind of conflicted by. I enjoy them being there, but I always worry because I'm not a super religious guy. But Instead, we are now starting to focus on how you do it. And so then the question is, well, what are the components that go into health, healthy sexuality? And, you know, the, 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 right now there is some, some consensus that healthy sexuality is sex that is honest, sex that is mutual, sex that is, you know, safe in terms of attention to, to STIs and such, sex that doesn't involve exploitation, um, and, and sex that, that has some kind of integrity to it so that we can have honest, shared value kind of sex um, even if it is really super kinky and it's healthy so long as we do so in a consensual, open, negotiated kind of way. The story I often tell is, you know, if I'm at a hotel and I meet you at a hotel bar and we go, you know, and I tell you, gee, you know, I'm really looking for a long-term relationship and you seem like a wonderful person and we really are hitting it off and I'd love to, I'd love to try to have a long-term relationship with you. We go up to my hotel room, we have crazy hot sex, there's orgasms everywhere on the ceiling and splattered on the walls. But the next day, I don't call you because I knew you wanted a long-term relationship and I didn't. That might have been very, very pleasurable sex. It might be very, quote, good sex, but it wasn't healthy sex because I wasn't being honest and we didn't have shared values kind of going into this. Was it really even consensual, one might argue? Instead of trying to focus on what we do, let us focus instead on how we do do it. And instead of trying to stop the sex, let's try to enhance the degree to which our sexual behaviors can be honest. And, and, and the term I talk about often is having sexual integrity. You know, one of the things I really like about, you know, the caller that, that, that we were just chatting with is that he is really trying to figure out consciously how to make his sexuality a part of himself and his identity in a way that he wants it to be. He's taking charge of his sexuality in his life. And whether I agree with him or not, I am impressed by that because I think it is a very existentially authentic thing to do. Yeah, I, I think that's a beautiful point. I'd never heard uh, the, the comparison of acts and values mm -hmm. laid out so well. Uh, so that, that, thank you so much for sharing that with us. Yeah.